Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to give you a short explanation as to how the parasympathetic nervous system modulates the heart rate. So with that, let's give it a go. So I like to start off with this little experiment to first see how the parasympathetic nervous system affects the heart rate in general. So is it going to increase the heart rate or decrease the heart rate? So in order to answer this question, we're going to do a hypothetical experiment. And in this experiment, we have a heart, a human heart, that is connected to a monitor. Now, the monitor is going to be measuring the SA node's activity. And remember, the SA node is going to be the pacemaker of the heart. It is going to be the pacemaker cells that determine how fast the heart beats. So at baseline, or the control, without any parasympathetic nervous system innervation, the heart rate is going to be like this. So in this case, the experiment shows that the heart beats one, two, three, four, five, six times in three seconds. Now, in order to find the heart rate, you divide six by three, which gives you two, and then multiply that by 60, which gives you 120 beats for, per minute. So how would the heart rate be affected by the parasympathetic nervous system? Well, if we brought the parasympathetic nervous system in and the parasympathetic nervous system interacts with the heart, what we would see is this. So in three seconds, the heart rate, the heart would beat around one, two, three, four. So four divided by three is 1.33. Multiply that by 60, you get a heart rate of 80 beats per minute. So when the parasympathetic nervous system came in, the heart rate decreased from 120 to 80. So the parasympathetic nervous system is going to decrease the heart rate. But how is it going to decrease the heart rate? Well, the parasympathetic nervous system is going to decrease the heart rate in three ways. So let's see the first way. So all the parasympathetic nervous system effects on the pacemaker cells of the heart are going to be through a muscarinic receptor. So this muscarinic receptor on the heart is going to be a GI protein. So when acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system comes in, acetylcholine will come in and it will bind to the muscarinic receptor. Now, in the meantime, before the muscarinic receptor is activated, we have adenylate cyclase. So adenylate cyclase is going to be an enzyme that converts ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP will then activate protein kinase A, and then protein kinase A will phosphorylate L-type calcium channels. So what does the acetylcholine do in this case? Well, when acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic receptor, the GI protein is activated. And when the GI protein is activated, it will inhibit adenylate cyclase. So in other words, we decrease the level of phosphorylation for the calcium channel because you're decreasing the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. So when acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic receptor, it activates the GI protein. The GI protein interacts with adenylate cyclase, which decreases activity. This decreases the amount of cyclic AMP, which therefore decreases the amount of protein kinase A activity, which decreases the level of phosphorylation on the calcium channel. So how does this affect the L-type calcium channel? Well, in order to answer that question, we're going to look at a hypothetical experiment. So in order to answer this question, we're going to do a voltage clamp experiment. So a voltage clamp experiment is basically when you take a micro pipette and you electrically isolate a channel. So it's typically going to be a voltage gated ion channel. So what you do in the experiment is you exert a constant voltage on the channel and then you measure the current through that channel. So it's a good way to see how the current varies at different voltages through an open channel. So in this experiment we're going to be looking at the L-type calcium channel in the phosphorylated state. So when the L-type calcium channel is in the phosphorylated state and we exert a positive voltage on the channel, what we see is that the channel will open and will allow calcium to flow into the cell. Now, if we were to look at the current through this channel at the phosphorylated state, what we would see is something like this. Now, take note here on the monitor that a negative current means that 
positive charge is moving into the cell. So whenever you see these dips into the negative numbers, that's when there is current moving through the L-type calcium channel. So what we see here is that the L-type calcium channel opens seven times in this experiment. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it opens seven times, and this is going to be correlated to the open probability. So we're going to talk about that in a second. So what would happen if we dephosphorylate this channel? How would this graph vary? So if we were to do the same experiment but dephosphorylate the channel, so when we exert a positive voltage and open the channel, what we would see is something like this. So the first thing that you would notice is that the channel opens less times. So instead of opening seven times, it opens four times. Now what has happened here is that the open probability of the calcium channel has decreased. So in other words, the probability that the channel is open at any particular voltage is decreased. So in other words, it's harder to open up these calcium channels than it was before. So effectively, by dephosphorylating this channel, you're increasing the threshold for initiating an action potential. So in other words, it's harder to start an action potential than it was before when the channel was phosphorylated. So now let's look at the second way in which the parasympathetic nervous system decreases the heart rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our muscarinic receptor again. And remember that the muscarinic receptor is a GI coupled protein receptor. So we're going to bring in our acetylcholine and acetylcholine is going to bind to the receptor. Now remember at the same time we have adenylate cyclase which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Now, remember that when the muscarinic receptor is activated, the GI protein is activated, and when the GI protein is activated, it binds to the adenylate cyclase, which will therefore inhibit its, act its activity. Now, cyclic AMP, which is produced by adenylate cyclase, is able to bind to another channel in the pacemaker cell called the funny channel. So the funny channel, remember, is the channel that regulates phase four for the pacemaker cells. So when cyclic AMP binds to it, it's going to cause a certain effect. Now, with the action of the muscarinic receptor, acetylcholine comes in, binds some muscarinic receptor, activates GI, and the GI, as we know, inhibits adenylate cyclase. So therefore, we're going to decrease the amount of cyclic AMP and decrease the amount of cyclic AMP that binds to the funny channel. So how does this affect the funny channel? Well, we're going to do the same experiment that we did with the calcium channel. So we're going to start off with the funny channel bound to cyclic AMP. So when we exert a negative voltage on the funny channel, because remember the funny channel is going to open in response to negative voltage, what we see is that when it opens, positive charge comes in. But when cyclic AMP is bound to it, we see that this channel opens seven times. So what if we were to take away the cyclic AMP? Well, if we took away the cyclic AMP and we repeated the experiment, what we would see is something similar that we saw with the L-type calcium channel. We see now that instead of opening seven times, it opens four times. So when we decrease the amount of cyclic AMP binding, this decreases the open probability of the funny channels. Therefore, this causes the rate at which the cell reaches threshold to uh, decrease. So so that is going to be the second way in which the parasympathetic nervous system decreases the heart rate. So let's now look at the final way at which it decreases the heart rate. So the final way in which the muscarinic receptor or the parasympathetic nervous system decreases the heart rate is actually going to be through the beta gamma subunit of this G protein coupled receptor. So remember that the parasympathetic nervous system is going to release acetylcholine acetylcholine binds to the receptor, which activates the GI protein, but at the same time, the beta-gamma subunit is also going to dissociate. Now, the beta-gamma subunit is going to interact with a specific protein channel called the GERC channel. So when the beta-gamma subunit binds to it, it opens this channel and it allows potassium to flow out of the cell. And as potassium flows out of the cell, the inside of the cell becomes more negative. This therefore leads to hyperpolarization. So that by hyperpolarizing, you basically also will result in a decrease in heart rate. 
So in summary, the parasympathetic nervous system decreases the heart rate by affecting the pacemaker cells in three ways. The first way is by decreasing the level of phosphorylation of the L-type calcium channels, and this results in an increase of the threshold for initiating an action potential. So in other words, it's harder or more difficult to start an action potential. The second way is by decreasing the amount of cyclic AMP binding on the funny channels. This will therefore decrease the rate at which the cell reaches threshold. And then the last way is by allowing the beta gamma subunit to bind to the GERC channels, which allows potassium to flow out of the cell. This causes hyperpolarization. So all of these three things work together in order to decrease the heart rate. So I hope this helped you understand how the parasympathetic nervous system affects heart rate, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.